Giant fans, what's up? NYG Funk here, man. Tough Monday morning. Tough Monday morning. Had a lot on the line against Arizona. We're riding a four-game winning streak. Can't come in hot. The division in our grasp, and we just completely laid an egg. There's no way around it. Um, I am broke down all eight sacks, which was the difference and the big thorn on the side all game that really limited us from ever getting back into the game. Immediately, they come out and sack us, fumble, set the tone. Their defense balled out. But you guys go chop it up, man. I know how Giants online, Giants rabid fans online, dissect it, share it, comment. Let me know what you guys think. There was a lot of blame to go around from a mental standpoint, from a physical standpoint. There really wasn't a lot of tricky stuff that we didn't ID other than the first play. But... A lot of twists and games and stunts up front that we really didn't handle well. Mainly from Zeitler broke down completely twice. Um, and they rushed four consistently. They got home rushing four consistently. So dropping seven, even without the all 22 that isn't out yet, there was a, nowhere to go with the ball if they're going to get home rushing four. And a lot of times they're getting free rushers rushing four guys. There's not going to be anywhere to go with the ball. You have a limited quarterback. With a hamstring injury, normally more mobile than he was on Sunday. But just, uh, yeah, you guys enjoy the video, man, or don't enjoy the video. I know it's a tough film to watch, but, you know, if you're going to be here for the good times, you got to be here for the bad times. The, you know, that's what being a real fan's all about. Um, we got three games left in the season. Um, hopefully, Daniel Jones can go out there and play. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes this week with that. More so just to evaluate the team. You know, we're a 5-8 and eight team. You are what your record says you are. There's a lot of hype because the division's so bad. But we're 5-8, and eight, and that's where about I expected us to be at this point in the season. Um, how you get there is how you get there. But we're still building. We're still an improving team. We still have a lot of talent deficiency that we have to clean up in the offseason. And these three games are going to happen. We're going to play these three games and we're going to look however we look and people are going to get evaluated and decisions are going to get made. But offensively, you know, it would be nice to evaluate our offense in these next three high pressure games with our starting quarterback. I'm going to do a lot more detailed stuff, but, you know, for now, just take a look at these sacks. I break them down, assign blame where I think it belongs. And you guys comment, let me know what you think, share, chop it up and go Giants, man. Peace. Sack of the game, our old friend Marcus Golden playing really well for Arizona. Actually really happy for him. He was a good giant, a real professional when he was here. Sorry to see him go, but it's just part of the business. So this one, you can't put on the quarterback. This is three tight ends here. You have Ingram leaking, then you get Toy Lolo, and you get Caden Smith. Both of those guys go here. Uh, then you're going to have a play action with the running back that's going to get the linebacker sucked up. Give Jones a nice window to throw this curl route here, which was open. But you can't put this on the quarterback unless he sets the protection. That can be his the one area where you can fault him for. But even the fumble, which is a problem with him, this one you can't fault him for fumbling. He's trusting that those guys in a heavy formation are going to have that blocked up. That's unacceptable. This is sack number two of the game on third down. This is going to be completely a coverage sack. There's going to be nowhere to go. You got three receivers at the bottom, one receiver up top. At the snap, you'll see Will Hernandez, the left guard, eventually give this gives this up. But at the bottom here, he's looking down. He got a corner and a go at the bottom, kind of running into each other. Not the greatest routes run or design. Both of the guys in the flats are covered. Up top on the go, you have double coverage, and then you have a robber sitting in the middle of the field. Jones with the hamstring clearly wasn't 100%. Tries to get out of this. Very limited mobility. Tries to pick up what he can. We end up punting there 100%. That's a coverage sack. Sack number three has Son Reddick at the top of the screen against the rookie right tackle, Matt Parrott. He's going to just beat him with a nice move to the outside and just get to Jones. If you want to be as nitpicky as possible, these guys end up running a stunt with Golden coming around. The running back comes up and gets a chip. If this is handled more cleanly, Andrew Thomas, when he gets contact here, watches his guy down. But it's a little bit late. If you want to be picky, 
you could argue that if this stunt is picked up more cleanly, maybe he has a pocket to step into to get out of the outside pressure. But that's a little nitpicky. I think this one's completely on pair. Who just gets beat to the outside. No room to step up. Sack, fumble. Hold on to the football, Daniel Jones. Sick of seeing that. Straight up. That's on him. Hold on to the football. Protect it. Four, there's a lot of blame to go around. Um, Hassan Reddick's going to come and get to the edge. If you guys have been following, Andrew Thomas has been getting beat inside by oversetting out here, and then these guys coming back inside. So what they've coached him to do instead is to set inside hard and then force these guys to go around him and then push him past the quarterback. That's impossible if you have pressure up the middle, which you do with this stunt here. The right tackle pair and the right guard, uh, Zeitler, are both going to go here, and Golden is going to get a free rush inside. So a little bit of a shared responsibility, but the ultimate thing is you can't just not handle these stunts and get pressure right up the middle. Reddick's going to get the credit for this sack, but you can't have a free rusher. There's nowhere to step up. That's the design of how they've coached these guys. Push the ends past the pocket, be firm up front, and give your quarterback a chance to climb the pocket. Sack number five, really disappointing to see our offensive line have been playing so well, but this is another communication breakdown of got the right guard Zeitler, the right tackle Fleming. Fleming's going to do a good job to pick up the stunt and stay on his man when these guys do the twist, but Zeitler's really late and Reddit gets his direct line to the quarterback. And then the reason Gates isn't here to help is because up top, this is really creative and some veteran gamesmanship with the tackle going to go get a piece of Thomas. And then you're going to have Golden fake like he's coming inside and then stay outside. That's a complete breakdown of our guys. Some gamesmanship up top. Really veteran savvy move by those two. We'll run it through. You see down at the bottom there, just a complete breakdown. Run it back one more time. Unacceptable. Free shot at the quarterback. Another fumble. Hold on to the ball. He re-injures his hamstring. Just not getting it done. Sack number six. This one looks like everyone's covered. Don't have the all 22 yet, so you can't really see the coverage downfield, but this is just going to be another game inside. They run double twists. These guys are all going to be twisted up front. We pick it up well as far as uh, assignment-wise, but then you're going to get the left guard, Lemieux, is going to stand straight up. And when he comes on twist, he's going to get underneath of him and push him back in the pocket. Looks like Jones has nowhere to go with the ball. The routes that are on the screen are covered. You can't really see downfield. And with his hamstring limited, he's not getting out of this. This looks like a coverage sack. But Lemieux, you see, he's way too high. Gets pushed right back into the quarterback. Um, that's just him getting beat physically. Assignment-wise, we handled these stunts. But good coverage by Arizona. And really bad leverage by Lemieux. Sack number seven. Um, the theme of all these sacks is they're getting home with four. Sometimes it's mental breakdowns by us. Sometimes it's physical breakdowns. But they're rushing four, dropping seven. So there's nowhere to go with the ball, which stands to reason. If you can get home with four and cover with seven, there's going to be nowhere to go with the ball. A lot of coverage sacks. This time you're going to get a bull rush from Hassan Reddick who's been winning with speed all day. You're going to see Fleming overset. He's going to jump outside. And then he's been winning with speed all day, so he's just going to get up under his pads and take him on a ride and walk him back to the quarterback. You can argue that Colt McCoy maybe can make a play and scramble outside. It's a lot to ask coming into the game cold, but just another. This time we just get beat physically. Cam Fleming, just they ride him right back to the quarterback. We had to set him up with the speed all game. And then go to power, get up under his pads. It's textbook bull rush. Great game for Hassan Reddick. He was a beast. This is the final sack of the game. They finally put us out of our misery. Um, sack number eight, man. It says That says all you need to know. Eight damn sacks. Just like last year when Arizona came in here and sacked us eight times. But up top, you're just going to get Andrew Thomas getting uh, just abused up top to the outside. Colt McCoy has no shot here. He does. Everybody else does a good job. He has a firm pocket. He has room to step up, and elite level pocket presence quarterbacks can uh, navigate and have that sixth sense 
Daniel Jones struggles mightily with that. So this one isn't a result of just having a backup quarterback. But you can't fault anybody. That's Andrew Thomas getting beat. That's Andrew Thomas getting beat. And Hassan Reddick, he he was amazing today. I loved him coming out of Temple. Um, always thought he was an awesome player. Finally found a home. They've moved him around a lot on defense. But as a just strictly edge rusher, he's killing it. 